So um, first of all, let me say thank you so much to you ladies for volunteering to do this and for all of your preparedness because I got text messages and emails from all three of you from the moment I made the request. And <laughs> your, the way you prepare and care just blows me away and I know everybody's going to appreciate it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start out by asking you to quickly tell us um, how long you have been in the business and how many shifts, if you know, how many shifts you have. So let's just start there. Karen, you go first. Okay. Um, I have been in the business about 20 years. And so this is, you know, it's really if we're counting 9-11 kind of as a shift, right, it's probably. really my third shift. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And tell me again the year, Kara. That I, I was trying to look and see if it was actually on OREC. I believe it was 1996 or 1998. Okay. So yeah, it was right at 20 years. Okay. I think it was 1998 because I joined in 96. Okay. So I got my license in 96. Probably so. so. Okay. All right. And Brenda Packett. I um, have, well, and I didn't think about 9-11, so this would uh, be the third for me, too. I got my license very end of 2006, so my first sales and closings were January 2007, so I was a brand new agent. I mean, I was, this is my 14th year. I was a brand new newbie that 2007 year when things were uh, definitely changing. Ah, uh, okay, so that's going to be fun to hear about. Mm-hmm together great um, and Denise how about you I've been doing real estate for 20 years as well and um, so I've been through the big three shifts as well and um, the biggest one for me was the 2008 the one that impacted us the most mm -hmm. and uh, and so I've been in about eight years at that point okay okay perfect so um, I'm going to just ask you a couple of the questions that I received from different people including Debbie Dennis, uh, and then if you, I want you to speak from your gut and from your heart. I want these people to hear what you think is important. So if you want to go off script of the questions, it is totally okay with me. The goal here, the objective here is for people to get some wisdom from three amazing women. So, okay, I'm going to ask you this question. What do you remember Gary Keller your leadership or the shift book advocating and encouraging you to do at the beginning of the last downturn that you thought I can get through this with that. And oh, <laughs> um, for me, it was just back to the basics because I think in an amazing market like we've been in, um, we all get sloppy. I'm not going to say we all do. I ha I get sloppy. And now that I've now that I've gotten to experience some, you know, several really good markets, um, uh, getting back to the basics is what I always know I can do because I know them. They're there. We all know them. But getting back to them has been the most um, uh, specific task I could get back to. And did you go there automatically two weeks ago, three weeks ago, when you could see this was happening? Absolutely. Wow. That's incredible. Okay. Brenda? I am going to answer that after I go off script for a minute because I was not with Keller Williams when okay. the shift happened. I was with another uh, national brokerage. And like I said, I was brand spanking new. In 2007, in January, one of my clients called me. And like I said, I, I had no idea what was going on. I had four closings going and I thought life was great and said, Brenda, subprime lending is going away. Can you close me immediately? And I, in my head said, I have no idea what subprime lending is, but let's close. <laughs> and that was how the year went. It was still very much a seller's market. No one was telling me that things were changing. I thought that this was business as usual. We would put a sign in the yard and 30 days or under it was gone. So I rode that wave for all of 2007. My mentors simply were telling me how to do real estate the best that they knew how. And I adore them to the state. They, that was probably the gift, the blessing in disguise that I did not know. Nobody was telling me the sky was falling. And so I simply did what they, they told me to do at the beginning of 2008 
everything really started coming to, I'll call it a screeching halt. I sold about 60% the next year. Um, when I came uh, of what I had done that first year and, and I, I've got a couple of tactics I want to share about expenses because that was profound, but I'll do that in a, mo a moment. When I came to Keller Williams, that was 2011, the fall of 2011. So the recession had ended and I was attending mega agent camp in the fall and Gary, you know, the, the book had been out for about a year or so. Gary was teaching from that book from the day I stepped into this company to today. He has never stopped. He always talks about these tactics. So he immediately was talking about running your business like a business and lead generation and red light, green light and leverage and things I had never heard of before. And I was taking notes. And that that's probably been the most profound thing for me as far as what I learned from this leadership locally and from Gary. Um, it doesn't take a shift to use these tactics and be successful and thrive. Oh, so, so, so true. And gosh, Brenda, I remember that mega camp like it was yesterday and you being with us and um, you looking at me and saying, oh my God, this is, mm -hmm. this is. I had, I had no idea what I didn't know. Yeah. Until I attended. That's great. Okay, Denise. Yeah. Um, I think the thing that always stuck up out to me whenever I heard Gary um, speak, and Gary was always the reason why we went to every training and anytime we could get his words in our ears, this is what we heard. And that was cut your expenses and go back to the basics. And the basics are lead generating. Um, and I have to say that if you will do that now in the downtime and get that so ingrained in what you do in your business every day, then when this thing turns around, you guys are going to make so much money um, because those are the things that make your business explode. And when I say cut expenses, I mean, go through every single thing in your business checkbook and your personal checkbook that you spend money on. And if you do not need it to survive, get rid of it right now. Um, don't live on your credit cards. Uh, if you uh, live within your means, change your means. <laughs> um, Get, get skinny uh, on your money. And the other thing that we did that was really valuable to me, this was something new because I'm not naturally a saver, but you need to create really good habits right now in your business and in your personal life. And we got a savings account and we didn't have very much money to put in it, but get in the habit of putting a little bit of everything in that savings account. And it's just a little bit when you're scrambling to cover your expenses, but it's a habit and it's a habit that a realtor needs. So anyway, I have a lot to say today about habits, but, but that was, those were the starting points for us. And then the lead generation, um, the one thing that I would tell everyone to start with, whether you're brand new or you've been doing this for 20 years like I have, there's a little form that Keller Williams uses in, uh, in our training for new realtors. And it's, you know, write down 100 people that, that you can put in your database and it asks you, you know, it kind of gives you some clues, different people that you're maybe not thinking of, everyone in your phone, everyone that your kids play soccer with, everyone who provides a service, you're the people who cut your hair, the people who do your dry cleaning, the people that you talk to at the grocery store that, you know, provide need, your needs. Go back through and do, really, we should all be doing that once a year and, and adding to our database because those are the people that are going to bring you business during this time and you need every piece of business. Wise words, thank you, thank you. Okay, so um, I'm gonna ask this next question. What was the strategy that was put in place in a previous shift that you carried forward into your business today? I didn't hear that last part, Susan. Okay, what was the strategy that you put in place in a previous shift that you carried forward into your business today. Okay. Carrie, you wanna go first? Sure. Um, I think keeping expenses low um, because um, someday, I maybe this can be a future call. I'd love to know what generally people spend a month to run their business. Um, because I think I stayed pretty trim on that. And, um, and so even though there are always things you can cut, 
Um, my overhead is pretty low and it's um, pretty transactional based. So, um, you know, my expenses come into play when I have transactions. So I think that's a, a positive place to be right now. So I think keeping your expenses low, even when times are really great. So then you're feeling a little more comfortable when um, we do go through a shift. Yeah, that's, that is so huge. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to recollect quickly and I'm not going to be able to, but in uh, one of Gary Keller's first addresses that he needs to go to is he talked about that very thing, Kara, about, you know, what, what we fall into is, and I think it's this from shift, what you fall into when you're doing really good is you start spending on things that truly, do you really need it? It's just, or is it that you're spending on things because you're making more money? And then when you get to to a circumstance like we're in today, it's it can be really difficult and really scary. So I think that's great that you uh, you never left that. You kept that uh, along with you all this time. So um, although this is hard on everybody, financially it's not hitting you with a like a brick in the forehead, right? Right. So that's great. Okay, so I've got uh, Kara. So Brenda or Denise, which one wants to go? Brenda, you want oh. to? I'll go. Um, two things, the, the part about expenses that I did want to say, because that first year in 2007, things were going really well in spite of the sky was falling, I guess, around us. Every shiny penny, every vendor, every bell mm -hmm. and whistle came my way and I had money to spend on it. And I did gleefully. I threw money at everything, whether it was lead generation, technology, just shiny, shiny pennies. So the next year, nobody was there to tell me to trim. And so I, I still kept up with those monthly subscriptions and all those fun things. And it was painful by the end of the year. That was my first introduction to, whoa, I probably don't need all these things. When I came to Keller Williams, my teammate, Sandy Breeze, who is now my transaction coordinator, and I, every year, we do two, two things at goal setting. We sit down, we sit down and look at where else can we trim? What else can we tighten the belt on? Did this produce for us, et cetera, like what Kara was saying and Denise were saying. The other part was bulletproof the transaction. And I never understood what that meant. We were doing it without really understanding what we were doing. We looked back at what caused us pain this year? What cost us a sale this year? What can we do from our buyer presentation and listing presentations all the way through to the closing table? What can we do? To, and I didn't know, like I said, the word was bulletproof. And now we've done that so many times. I really feel like it's a smooth operation. And now here we are in the shift. And I really, I mean, I know we can probably tweak some things and really will always keep a vigilant eye on it. But I think we're ready. That's fabulous. Denise. I think that was excellent advice. Really, really good. We do the same thing. Um, something that happened in our business that I had never done before, but I was a little bit overwhelmed where we were and, um, and it was hitting us in our business, but it was definitely hitting us at home as well. Um, through the, that shift in 2008 to 2011, um, we actually had to sell our home. So it, it, we went through some extreme times during that time. And one of the things that um, I did was uh, we, we devised a three-point strategy for lead generation because cutting expenses and lead generation is the name of the game right now. And so um, and what we committed to was we would have a three-point strategy that we would use for a, year's, a whole year's time, and then we would reevaluate. And um, we have never quit doing that because it worked really well for us. And we keep it really simple, simple and we focus with those three strategies um, to get our leads. And like currently this year, our words, this is going to sound real simple, but this is what works for us. It has for 12 years now. Um, we, we send out a monthly mailer. I work my Facebook a lot in my, with Messenger and with posting on other people's and things that I post and, um, and then making phone calls. And those are the three that we've chosen for this year. Um, if you go back through MREA or just ask around, you know, what are you doing to promote leads? Um, but MREA is a really good resource. There's a list of things that you can do to generate leads. There's several chapters about it. And um, I'm just telling you to, to pick three. And that keeps your business really focused and really simple. But the other part of that is commit to those things for a year and then track your results. 
So at the end of the year, every December, Bill and I have a meeting and we say, where did each piece of our closed business come from? And we make a chart every December and we evaluate what percentage of our business came from those three pieces of uh, those three generation, you know, lead generation tools. And um, if one of them is not performing well, then we remove that piece and we add a new one to it. And then we do that for a year. And I'm telling you, um, it works. It works. It keeps it simple. Sometimes I just need it to be simple. I would say uh, working for 12 years is proof that it works. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. And, you know, we've done handwritten notes that year. Oh, that was a hard year. But some people are really good at that. Um, we've done involvement in clubs and hobbies where we both had to be involved in a whole lot of stuff. That worked really well. Um, it's not the, the answer for every year. We've hosted events for our COI. We did that one year, two years. Um, a long time ago, before it was no longer valid, we had a magazine, the back of the magazine ad, uh, the back ad for one of the real estate magazines. That was a very expensive peg to our stool, but, um, but it was very effective for about eight years for us. I know mm. some people blog, but anyway, there's go to MREA because that chapter is golden. Okay, perfect. If I can um, piggyback on what Denise said, you know, I'm still a proponent of the mailer, the monthly mailer, and I, I have been doing it. Some people have been on my mailer for 18, 16, 18 years, and one of them called me this year and said, I'm finally going to do business with you. You've been sending me cards all these years. Let's do a piece of business. And I'm so happy. But, um, you know, I, I think especially now, um, there's a lot of online activity. There's a lot of social media. All of us are trying to say we're still relevant. We're still here. We're still doing business. I think that's a different touch that not as many people are doing. So if, I show up in their mailbox and they only look at it for a few minutes. At least they're thinking of me for a minute. No, I, uh, I think that is wonderful. And I'll tell you, I saw um, a post from Tony Jor this morning that his little boy received a letter from his teacher. Oh. Uh, was checking in on him and he made the point in the post. Wow. This was a wake up call for me. We're going to write letters today. So that's a great idea. Isn't it? I thought so too. Just, just um, just a care letter. I thought that was just terrific. All right. Now, I'm going to go off script a little bit on this because, Brenda Puckett, you said bulletproofing transactions. What does that mean? I What Sandy and I um, had done originally, and that was, like I said, with our consultation, the buyer consultation and listening presentation, things that tripped us up where we lost a sale were maybe I hadn't explained about calling the realtor on the sign or an open house or for sale by owner, um, things in the listing presentation that were fluff that got them distracted from the real task at hand that we needed to explain to them how we're going to serve you and get this to the, to the finish line. Um, in the actual transaction part, Sandy and I just looked at every single thing to make sure that there are touches going on throughout the whole thing. We know that we pass this off to either Jennifer or the title company or the lenders or whatnot. Once we get under contract, that doesn't mean that we are out of the loop. They need to hear from us. They need to know we need to be checking and double checking, checking and triple checking that all those things are happening. The appraisal, we have a massive uh, task list that keeps, CD keeps in dot loop. The minute she gets a file, and anybody can do this, whether you have a transaction coordinator or not, and she assigns dates to every single thing of when she's checking on TRR was due back this date, inspection deadline is this date, um, appraisal should be, you know, in this window, things like that. And no stone is left unturned. We're, we're watching every single thing to, to the finish line. Great. Perfect. Anybody have anything else to add to that? I think just um, talking to our folks that are in you know, under contract right now is huge. Like Brenda just said, you know, I told a seller yesterday, you can call me 27 times a day. I don't care. If you have a concern, call me. Let's talk about it. Let me, you know, either address it or put your worries to rest because I think we, we have to be there for those folks under, transact, under um, contract right now. Absolutely. Okay, now let me ask you, um, 
what is your number one most important activity that you do on a regular basis to not just survive, but to thrive when you move through or as you're moving through this shift that we're in right now? What is your number one most important activity that you do on a regular basis to not just survive, but to thrive when you move through the current shift that we're in? I got mine. What? Ready? I said, yep. I got mine. Okay, go. Um, obviously, talking about some of the things that we've uh, done already, I spent the entire weekend getting very purposeful and focused on my calendar. <clears throat> I want to be... I, I want to wake up and know what my job is, just like when I was a brand new agent and know today is this. Now, I'm doing the things that we've been talking about, and I am a very much sphere of influence, database, referral uh, type realtor. You know, I'm not out there doing um, business and expires, and now obviously open houses are kind of by the wayside and things like that. So I, those are, are still my tactics and some of the things that Kara talked about, letters and social media like Denise talked about. The calendar is probably the biggest thing. I am so proud of myself. Last night, I was like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> when I went down, I mean, hour by hour, uh, Sunday through Saturday, I know what is expected of me when I get up. And that includes feeding the dogs and taking them for a walk and fitting in yoga and meditation and all those things. And then I know when work time is. Perfect. Uh, yeah, that's great. I, you know, staying in activity, staying in real estate activity, that was something that um, you, for a very long time, I've had an office at the office. And so I always made a point to go into the office every day and work. Um, now that looks a little different. I'm going to my home office to work, but um, being in activity, but since Brenda touched on that one, my secondary was say yes. I had someone call and say, mm -hmm. um, can you help my friend find a rental? And three weeks ago, I would have said, you know, I really don't handle rentals. This time I said, yes, <laughs> <laughs> because that person's going to be a buyer and I need to get in front of that person now, even though they're not going to buy for a year. So um, my um, secondary answer is just say yes. Do I have That's a good. I have a listing that's a lower value. Would you take it? Absolutely, yes. I have a buyer that maybe isn't spending very much right now. Would you like to take it? Absolutely. So I'm saying yes. That's like good. Talking it out of the park. Okay, Denise. I love that. I'm going to adopt that. That's awesome. Yeah. It's dangerous, but it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. We have all the city yeah. monkeys just <laughs> saying no. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just say yes. Uh. <laughs> You know, I, what I do when I'm desperate, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this be my answer, is I get up and I say, where is my next money going to come from? That is a question that came to my mind when there were so many awful things happening and I had to focus somewhere. And, and so to me, it was focus, where is the next money coming from? And what that looks like is, and I still get up in the morning and I ask myself that question when I sit down at my desk. And that is, if I already have something in the pipeline, I need to be communicating with those people and making sure that that transaction is protected. And so that's what we check on first thing. And then anyone who ever talks to me about buying a house or about, you know, we're thinking that we might or selling, um, I actually have a notebook that I keep and they get a page in it. And I literally write that. So all of these lead people who really seriously talk to me about, or if not even seriously, people who have, you know, you can tell when they're dreaming and thinking about doing it and they may not do it for five years, but they go in my notebook. And, um, and so I am constantly communicating with those people. I'm calling them regularly, but that notebook is one of the most key things that I keep on my desk. And uh, cause that those are my business. And what was encouraging was, December was really slow for us th this last December and we had no business in December. I know that wasn't true for everybody because I watched everyone's numbers, but <laughs> they weren't our numbers. And, um, but so what I did that month is I, I sat down and with my notebook that I have and I, I looked through and I marked everybody that was, had already sold and done business with us. But then I transferred into it in, in, into a new notebook for this year. And I was amazed that I had almost 20 people that had said they were going to do business with us in 2020. And I can guarantee you those were my phone calls that I made 
the first of mm -hmm. January. So, um, and those are people that were listing right now and that were selling their homes. And uh, not a week goes by that I don't add someone to that notebook. So anyway, that's, so, so our strategy for that is that the most important thing we do is um, have communication with people about houses and then track them, keep, keep in, you know, keep in communication with them. Thank I you. think that's lead generation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it is. No matter how, how many different ways we say it, it all comes back to lead generation, doesn't it? That's right. Now, let me ask you a question. I don't know if you all saw this on Facebook. It was from Ross Williams. Shift Pivot Online is talking about a 30, 60, 90 day plan. Do you have anything like that in place now? And if so, what does it look like? Somebody else. My answer is no. <laughs> What I do have is, to me, the 30, 60, 90, um, to me, it's, it's just the basic things. Cut your expenses and expand the people who can do business with you first. And I didn't want to just make that 30 days because I need to be doing that this week. I can't really afford to do that for the next 30 days. The second thing would be get your three-point strategy of, you know, what, how are you going to lead generate? Decide that and, and be focused with it and track it and, and be committed to it for a year. And that was my second thing. So that would be like my 60 day, but honestly, you need to be doing that in the next 30 days as well. And then that stretches over your year. And then the third, th the third part of that whole thing would be um, follow up this, this is something we adopted when it was really tough before. And I honestly can say for eight years in my real estate business, I had not done this, but follow up every lead until they either do business with you or they tell you to go away. And that is really, that is really what I've adopted during that time that we've continued to do. And I'm really good at that. And, and sometimes people, people do tell you to go away, <laughs> but, mm -hmm. um, but mostly they just do business with you eventually. And, and so those were, that was kind of my 30, 60, 90. That was my three step. It really wasn't 30, 60, 90, but it was my three step strategy a that great, we're working. Great answer. And thank you for pointing out that, that their follow up is part of your lead generation. They're two different things. Huge. But follow up is everything. It can really make a big difference in your lead generation. Because if you're not following up on your lead generation, it's kind of a waste of time. So thank you for bringing that up. Kara. Sure. I feel like I have a one-day plan. I am. <laughs> how I feel right now. Oh, my gosh. Things are changing so dramatically. It seems like every day that um, I really am taking every day, one day at a time. You know, yesterday I was moving through my day in a so yesterday or Saturday, they're moving together. Um, and a seller texted me and said, okay, what now, since we have the new, you know, advanced stay-at-home order? And I was like, okay, I hadn't heard about that yet. I was social distancing myself from the news. And, uh, you know, so that changed my plans right there because I had a seller who was concerned. So I feel like I'm just taking it one day at a time right now. And I'm going to sell as many darn houses as I can for as long as I can um, because we may see a slower time in the future in the next several months. Yep. The only thing that I wanted to add was same thing. I don't, I didn't look at it like 30, 60, 90. I agree with Kara. I think that we are going to be shifting within this shift. Oh my gosh. Constantly. Right. This is uncharted territory. We have no idea what's going to happen. And like Kara said, we had a new, you know, shelter in place kind of order. So I, I think we're going to, uh, one of my words this year is flow. I think we're, we're going to need to be ready to flow to whatever the next thing is and keep, keep our head down with the, what Denise said, our three, you know, basic strategies. Brenda, thank you. You know, it's funny because there are two words that I am saying to myself daily, many times through the day. And that is, we need to be nimble and we need mm -hmm. to stay fluid. And mm -hmm. I think that's, that just is exactly what you described because um, that's, that's what's going to keep us going. If we get, if we get stuck in something, then it just, it's, it's just going to make those things more difficult. All right. So we're going to, I'm going to do a couple of 
things and then we're going to wrap up here. Um, gosh, you, you ladies have been wonderful. So what has encouraged you over these last two weeks as we, as we realize this is not business as usual? I personally have been encouraged with um, all of the content and the ease of access of content from um, KWU and KWRI. I think they just knocked it out of the park on what they gave us and what they gave us. Back. Truly. Yeah. That's exactly what I wrote. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's great. And I also appreciate um, what you are doing and what KWRA is doing because, you know, that really helped me last week to see some faces and see some comments and have some laughs and um, it could feel a little bit normal for a few minutes. Just for a little bit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Denise, anything else? Yeah, I have to say uh, the shift, the shift book club has been amazing and having being able to get on live with people I, it really is keller williams has just done an amazing job and so have you susan as our leader locally um thank you very much and you know the other thing that that when i really begin to look at this and go back through kind of some of our books that um our corporate books because i've been working on that i was really encouraged that on the other side of this there's a lot of money for us and so um i I really am looking forward to that. And, you know, Bill and I had been doing some planning on, you know, I'm 58, he's 61. We'll probably retire from real estate in 10 to 12 years because we because we love it and we'll do it a long time. But we're not ready for that yet. And so and I know people aren't really thinking about their retirement funds maybe today, but I've been looking for where are the opportunities. And I have to tell you, as soon as I begin to look at what happened through the last shift, looking back at our own books, it was like, oh my gosh, there's a boatload of money on the other side of this and we're gonna be able to use that for our retirement. So that's something I'm looking forward to. You know, it means hard work right now and being diligent, but um, you know, there's a, there's a saying that I actually wrote on my, my wall, uh, or I didn't write it. I had someone come in and paint it on my wall of my office the last time we went through a big shift and it was diligence over time produces results. And, you know, we have time. We're, we're going to, we're going to live through every single one of these days, you know, that's coming. And eventually we're going to get to a day where the money is good and it's going to be better than it was yesterday and the day before, because on the other side of every uh, shift where you go down, you know, you go down that bell curve, it comes back up. And the truth of the matter is there's usually fewer realtors, but there's a ton of business and we're going to be here. We're going to be here standing and prepared to do a good job for our clients, but also reap the benefit of that. Truth again, mm -hmm. magical words. That's wonderful. All right. So Kara, I'm going to ask you a question that has nothing to do with this, but I need it for my clothes. Okay. What is your favorite beach in um, Hawaii? Oh, well, it is Ka'anapali Beach. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Holly, so um, as we close today, I am going to say to our people that are going to be watching this video, I am coming to you from Kahana Polly. <laughs> All the other girls are at home working. I did love we it. Lose, did we lose Miss Puckett's beautiful face? Oh, wait, what happened? CP, you're, you're a big B. It just says. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, 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 and now there's a pirate on my beach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Sorry. Um, I, uh, what were you asking me where I'm coming from? It's really just, uh, Venita, Oklahoma, where I live now. Oh yeah. That the hoodlums have taken over. You gave me a little too much time to prepare for this meeting. So I had a bunch of costumes ready and I had to oh, wait till the end. Oh my gosh. Only you, sister. <laughs> Only you. All right. So we're going to end this with, um, I want each of you to share one word with your audience that's going to be watching, one word that will encourage them. Mine is consistency. Be consistent. Back to the, whatever your three things are, like Denise talked about, whatever your one thing is, just be consistent and do it. And like Denise said, there's, we're going to be fine. And uh, I read an article in the newspaper um, on Sunday. Um, we're going to find a way. And we'll all find that way. And as long as we're consistent in how we're doing that, it'll all be good. Okay. Great. Right. Thank Go, you. Go, Denise. Mine is change. Life is always changing. But just remember, this is just one moment in time. So if you're having a bad day and a hard week, 
don't think this is this is it. Just know that life is always changing, and it's just a moment in time, and it's going to get better. And um, change is my word. That makes me feel better just hearing Denise say that. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. okay, I agree with you. And okay, then, I can't yeah. smile or my mustache will fall off. Mine <laughs> is unwavering dot intent. Hashtag it's one word at Memorial High School. Hashtag go go. <laughs> Um, I, I really wanted mine to be intent, but it was a little blah without unwavering in front of it. So there you go. <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right, ladies, Kara Fulkins, Denise Wright, Brenda Puckett, you are the best. We thank you so much. And I know everybody that watches this video is going to just reap major benefits and have value. Thank you. I'm, thank I'm you. happy Bye -bye, to see everybody. your faces. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>